Hi, my name is Erica Gro. I'm a meteorologist from the United States, and I'm serving as co-moderator for the high-level roundtable discussion on the launch of the WMO Open Consultative Platform. I'm Tomas Molina, I'm Chief Meteorologist at Television of Catalonia in Barcelona, and I'm here to moderate this roundtable debate. We, we bring here people from the official meteorology, the National Met Services, the World Meteorological Organization, but also from the private sector, those companies that produce weather, that produce data, that produce machines to learn about data, but also the academia. And this uh, forum that we are talking about today, uh, we are dealing with the engagement of uh, private sector and also science and innovation. Data is, of course, a driver for forecasting. So if we're able to gather more data and understand what is happening right now, it will help us predict what's going to happen in the future. The best way for the weather, water and climate communities to harness emerging data issues is actually to recognise the value of what we have as a community. So to improve the forecast, we really need to be on top of technological developments in terms of computing as well. And having clear, consistent data rights can really help the private sector in, in developing uh, uh, more uses for uh, the important data that can save lives and property. The free and unrestricted access to an essential data set, I think this asset we must not give up. We cannot live without high quality observations, not only of the weather, but of all the other parameters. It's absolutely essential that all global NWP centers get access to the same set of critical uh, satellite products. And when we talk about tackling some of the world's most challenging problems, the private sector cannot do it alone. It is the single most important thing uh, for big organizations like UCMWF and the National Weather Service in the US and elsewhere to improve prediction. So we'll have cloud-resolved ensemble, global ensemble forecasting. That for me is the vital next step if we want to make a real step change in forecasting ability. Be inclusive, we want to get the people who need the information together with the people who are developing the information. The main thing is, is communicating to people, especially in times of high impact weather. We're going to need that partnership between public and private to achieve this vision. The public sector again providing the foundation, the private sector bringing a lot of innovation. Their job will change, but people who are using this information to make decisions, whether it comes from a private sector firm or a public sector firm, wants a human being in that loop. And the forecasters are, are really the experts to a lot of the customers. When we put in place a good framework uh, to define the roles to be played by the private sector and public sector and perhaps academic as well true transformational partnership occurs because at the end of the day when you're not concerned about who gets the credit, it's amazing what can get done. But the gap we are dealing with is huge. It's a gap that is related with a bigger system where, you know, prosperity in one region usually means, you know, vulnerability in another region. So it cannot be a WMO alone and it cannot be an individual, but there is room for us as individuals to contribute in that area. Thank you. If you are looking at your own needs and your partner is looking at their needs only, that's a negotiation and that doesn't foster good solutions. But the most important types of ethics is participation. How are the marginalized, including women, engaged in our process? The challenge for us is not the pace of change so much as the unpredictability of change. What he actually meant was to be here at this table, that we have to be involved to be able to, to form the partnerships that, uh, that uh, we need. This platform will, will help us a lot because we are, we are seeing that here.